Could it be that the best matchup in the ACC this year happens Saturday? Number five Clemson and 21 Wake Forest. The Deeks looking for their second ever win over a top 10 team. The first came in 1946. Also happening a long time ago, a win over the Tigers. 2008 was the last time Wake topped Clemson, so we'll see if that changes Saturday at noon on ABC. What will never change is the great insight we get from these two, Anna Adams from Clemson 24-7 and Les Johns from Demon Deacon Digest. Guys, the conversation around each quarterback is definitely a headliner, but Anna, let's start with you. Has DJ Uwe Angele done a better job of silencing the calls for Clay Clubnick? Absolutely. I think against Georgia Tech, you saw freshman Kay Clubnick come in and lead Clemson on a touchdown drive late in the game. And there was plenty of voices after that game saying, okay, Cade needs to be the guy. But then in these past two outings, you've seen DJ really settle in. He's shown accuracy, balance. He's been able to go through his progressions. He's used his legs and he's looked like a completely different quarterback from what we saw last year. Granted, it's been against subpar competition. Um, so I think this week will be a totally different test against Wake Forest. Um, but I, I do expect DJ to kind of continue what he's been able to show us so far. And, and for Wake Forest at quarterback, of course, uh, you know, of course, uh, Sam Hartman missed the last three weeks of camp with the blood clot issue, and even missed the first game of the season against VMI, but returned to throw, you know, 325 yards and four touchdowns on the road under wet conditions at Vanderbilt. And then, and then last week, you know, through through 300 yards and four TDs uh, against uh, against a good Liberty team. Um, you know, he did miss some throws in that game, uh, but he does appear to be back in sync and back into the flow of the offense. And it's an offense that at times has struggled to get going against the Clemson defense. So uh, they did find some good rhythm in the second quarter last season, and they're hoping to build off that momentum. Well, they did put 27 points against the Tigers on the board. So if they can find that rhythm that they found in the second quarter against Clemson and build off that, then they believe they have a chance to pull the upset uh, Saturday. Yeah, this is an awesome quarterback matchup. But the Clemson defense, as we know, is a well-known commodity. But, Les, what about this Demon Deacon defense? Well, of course, there's massive changes from a coaching staff perspective. They brought in Brad Lambert to take over as defensive coordinator. And one of the main keys is getting off the field on third down, and they've been extremely successful at that so far this season. Uh, they, they're limiting opponents to just like a 20% conversion rate on third downs. Uh, that's seventh in the nation right now. And, and if you look at, compare that to where it was last year against three non-conference opponents, that was in the mid-40s. So it's been a big, big impact. They're still forcing a lot of turnovers. Malik Mustafa is, is playing out of his mind at safety. And the defensive front is very stout. I think it's one of the best defensive lines Clemson will face this season. They're, they're deep, talented, and experienced. I think one of the main things to look for is, is injuries. There was five starters potentially that could be questionable um, on Saturday, three in the secondary and two up front. They either missed last week's game or left the game with injury. Davo Sweeney gave us an update yesterday saying some will be back, some are day to day and will be game time decisions. We won't know for sure until Saturday night when they release their availability report about an hour before kickoff. Um, so that's kind of a big deal. Five starters is, is nothing to kind of really um, gloss over. But I do think that there's enough depth regardless up front for Clemson. Um, to make Sam Hartman's life a little miserable at times, especially the run game, Wake Forest run game so far this season has not been overly impressive. And it really, their slow mesh, unique type of offense really starts with the run game. So if they're not able to get that going, it could be a long night for them. Um, you know, I, I do think that you could see Wake Forest try a lot of screens, maybe some quick passing game, even if that, that's not always in their repertoire, just because that's what's affected Clemson so far this season, and that's how teams have been able to move the ball. Clemson will obviously be on high alert for that, but that's one matchup that I'd like to watch. Meanwhile, Wake has never beaten Clemson in the Dabo Sweeney era. That is nuts. If it changes Saturday, how does it happen, Les? Well, I think, I think some of the keys are, like Anna says, to get some things going quick offensively. One of the things that really set Wake Forest back last year at Death Valley 
was ten of the first ten of the thirteen plays in the first quarter were either stopped for no gain or were actual negative plays offensively. Wake Forest has to start fast. They have to move the ball effectively to begin the game, get that first first down, and then move a tempo. And then it's going to be really winning one-on-one battles, not only in the trenches, but also on the perimeter. Wake Forest wide receivers need to create separation with the potentially depleted Clemson secondary and be able to make plays on the perimeter to make life a little bit easier for Sam Hartman. Yeah, and for Clemson, I think it's running the ball effectively. Um, And that's not only Clemson's trio of running backs, but also DJ Uigangale and his legs, whether the power runs or with the zone read. It's been well documented how much weight he's lost this offseason. He looks extremely more mobile in the pocket. He's able to scramble more effectively. He's just speedier getting to the edges. Um, And I think what you don't want to see is DJ forcing balls into small windows against these wake defensive backs who are savvy in the air. They know what they're doing um, in terms of playing the ball. And Clemson's wide receivers have not done a good job so far of winning those 50-50 balls or creating separation. So you're on the road. Wake Forest is starting to put up points. You don't want to press. I think Clemson would be better trying to get pushed up in the run game and seeing if they can use DJ's Uyungle to kind of create that mismatch and give them an advantage. I am so excited for this game. Thank you both so much for your great insight. And you can stay up to date with the latest on these two teams online at Clemson 24-7 and Demon Deacon Digest.